Venezuelan President Nicolás Maduro Moros signed a 20-year cooperation agreement with his Iranian counterpart, Sayed Ebrahim Raisi. Among the first results, a direct flight will link both capitals as of July 18th. In Bolivia, the first anti-corruption court judgment issued its verdict in the Janine Añez case. And the 12th BRICS ministers meeting held this Friday via video conference. From the headquarters of Telesur English in Havana, Cuba, this is from the south. I'm your anchor, Gladys Quesada, and these are the news. Iran and Venezuela have signed a 20-year cooperation agreement. Presidents Syed Ebrahim Raisi of Iran and Nicolás Maduro Moros of Venezuela signed a 20-year strategic cooperation agreement, according to a press conference given after holding an exchange in Tehran. Among the novelties of the bilateral appearance is the reactivation of direct flights Caracas-Tehran in order to promote tourism between both countries. Meanwhile, the Persian president assures that this measure will bring the peoples closer together and express his willingness to consolidate bilateral ties fruitful. In the United States, social movements from Latin America and the Caribbean protested all along the streets of Los Angeles to ratify their opposition to the policies of exclusion at the Summit of the Americas. Participants at the People's Summit marched to Los Angeles Convention Center to sign a document in protest to the policies of exclusion, the sanctions and blockades imposed by the U.S. government. Activists also denounced policies implemented by the Biden administration towards Latin America and the Caribbean, in addition to the indifference shown to address issues such as poverty, unemployment, migration, among others. The last plenary session of the Summit of the Americas took place at the Los Angeles Convention Center with the participation of representatives from Peru, Mexico, Honduras, Uruguay, among others. The summit was marked by criticism from several delegations regarding Washington's imposition to exclude several countries from the event. Most of the participating countries agreed to raise calls for unity, cooperation and integration for the common good of the peoples of the Americas. During his participation in the Summit of the Americas, the Prime Minister of Antigua and Barbuda, Gaston Brownie, stressed that for the next summits, no country in the region should be excluded. I must go on record as regretting that the invitation to this ninth summit were not extended to all heads of state. I recognize that there are crucial problems in our communities that require our collective attention. I hope that there will be no future summits to which no head of state of the Americas will be excluded. Prime Minister Brownie also denounced the unilateral coercive measures applied against Cuba and Venezuela as a barrier to peace and prosperity in the region. As for the embargo on Cuba, I must say that it is a barrier to peace and prosperity in this hemisphere. It must end in the same way we ask that there be contact and participation with the government of Venezuela so that the resources of that country are used for its needs with a constructive and peaceful government. This must be done by all parties to bridge the gaps and to promote the social political well-being of all the peoples of this hemisphere. Barbados Prime Minister Mia Motley, on the other hand, reaffirmed the need for debt relief to face the economic crisis affecting several countries in the region. We are required not only the relief from the debt crisis that is overwhelming countries. We simply do not have the physical space to respond to crises that were not created by us, but were created by others. And we are realizing that we face a double jeopardy. 
We were the countries from which wealth was extracted in order to help the developed world. Our countries were left without any kind of finance funds to be able to finance education, housing, and we struggle, and now we find that those efforts are crushed by the fact that we are facing and finding those funds to move forward. Cuban President Miguel Diaz-Canel gave a virtual greeting to the People's Summit held in Los Angeles in the U.S. The head of state thanked the organizers for this event for raising the voice of the peoples excluded from the Summit of the Americas. The revolution has always had it very clear. Where governments deprive us from our voice, peoples will be there to represent us, to speak on our behalf. This has been the case in an administrator of the colonies, when we, there were governments that were pushed by the emperor to break relations and ended up by obeying the order of the master with the honorable exception of Mexico. The Cuban Institute of Friendship with the Peoples was born from that understanding. Solidarity is not only a principle inseparable for the revolutionary praxis, it is the most formidable weapon for those of us who believe in the power of the masses, in the telluric force of mobilized peoples, and in the inspiring struggle for social justice. Cuban president alluded to the resistance of the Cuban people and the durability of the revolution that has resisted more than 60 years of sabotage, invasions and blockades and has not needed the OAS to obtain significant achievements. American nations, excluded from hemispheric alliances, for having rebelled against the empire. Other strikes, the same before, suggested to coup d'etat, the interpretation of international campaigns of terror like Operation Condor. Cuba was expelled from the OAS. It was separated from its natural place. They financed invasions and they continue to finance different attacks against the revolution. We are the honorable survivors of 63 years of blockade. And to the disgrace of that powerful empire, we are among the countries that have the highest levels of education, health, as well as our own scientific development. Venezuelan President Nicolás Maduro Moros, in a virtual way, also greeted the recently held Summit of the Peoples, where he declared that a world independent from the policies of the United States is possible. Beyond Washington. There is a world beyond imperial arrogance. And it is a world that is emerging. Dear friends of the People Summit, the true summit of Los Angeles, I wanted to take a break on the road to greet you with solidarity, a Bolivarian greeting, a humanist Christian greeting, an embrace to everyone and to all social organizations. In the same context, President Maduro stated that it was necessary to build a multipolar world based on dialogue and respect. Here we are standing from the construction of a different world, a multipolar, multicentric world, a world based on dialogue and respect, on the equal treatment of states, of peoples, of governments, a world based on profound dialogue, a dialogue of cultures and religions, of dialogue uh, that's inclusive of ideologies and positions for a new humanity. A new humanity is necessary and it is being made. A new humanity is possible. Former president of Bolivia, Evo Morales, criticized the exclusion policy applied and the double standards by the United States at the Summit of the Americas. The only thing that the United States does is to exclude people, marginalize, intervene with their policies. The United States proclaims democracy, but by excluding Cuba, Venezuela, and Nicaragua, well, they are lying to everyone. That is not democracy. It also defends freedom. How is it possible that the people who freed themselves from the empire are excluded from the summit of the Americas? The former Bolivian president called for the unity of the Latin American peoples to fight against the interference policies of the U.S. government. The United States is no longer an empire.
and surely with its representment against life, against humanity, they still try to impose policies, policies through intervention, policies of economic extraction of natural resources almost everywhere in the world. Therefore, sisters and brothers, for deep reflection, may we continue in this hard fight with unity for our freedom, unity for our freedom, and above all, how to respect the cultural diversity and the enrichments of our identity, of our dignity, also of our freedom. Teletour expands its signal with new satellite parameters. Since more than ever, the world connects to us and our stories are being heard in other farther away nations. These parameters are in place since June 1st in Latin America and the Caribbean, both in English and in Spanish, and quite soon further changes will be implemented for the signals in Europe, the Middle East, and Africa. This new multi-platform will continue providing truthful content to oppose the hegemonic media's narrative and our faithfulness to our audience. We'll take a short break now. Join us again after this. Welcome back. In Bolivia, this Friday, the first court of anti-corruption judgment issued its verdict in the Janina Agnes case. Ten years in jail is the sentence that was handed to the three men implicated in the coup brought to former President Evo Morales in 2019, Janine Añez, the general and former commander of the armed forces, William Taliban, and the police general, Juri Calderon. Six other implicated were sentenced to between four and six years in prison. The justification for this decision will be explained at a hearing on June 15th, according to the judicial courts. The judgment also stated that persons charged to serve their sentences begin from the moment they were arrested. In Colombia, at least three adults and a child were killed in an explosive attack in the department of Caquetá. The incident occurred when the victims were riding a motorcycle, motorized tricycle in the only road available for the transit since the usual roads were closed due to the protest. The detonation of the explosive device in the town of Cartagena de Chaira in the Murichal sector killed the driver and the three passengers. According to the records of the Institute for Studies for Development and Peace in the past, this is the 46th massacre so far in 2022. Now we move on to other topics. China and India have announced increased oil purchases from Russia, a decision that undermines the effectiveness of Western sanctions against Moscow. China imports by sea 1.09 billion barrels a day from Russia, while India imports 740,000 barrels. Commodities analysts forecast that India, China and Turkey will continue to buy Russian crude oil due to big price discounts. International media reports that the European Union will try to dissuade alternative buyers of Russian oil. In that sense, they have forbidden European insurance companies from providing coverage for ships transporting Russian oil. Now we move on to other topics. Drought affects 77% of the 1,694 municipalities in Mexico. According to the National Water Commission, the area with moderate to exceptional drought occupied 56.17%, while 21.51% of the country is in abnormally dry conditions. The agency informed that due to this situation, there will be controls on water supply and detailed that the most severe drought conditions occur in the states of Coahuila, Baja California, and Chihuahua.
Firefighting helicopters and planes stabilized the blaze from a wildfire which broke out two days ago in the Sierra Bermeja, southern Spain. Some 2,000 people who fled their homes when a fall fire broke out, officials said. The fire in the forested mountainous area of Sierra Bermeja, just inland from Estepona, was no longer spreading freely. And the Andalusian regional government said in a statement, the region's Infoca Forest Fire Authority confirmed the fire stabilized and authorized the return of residents who were evacuated. And the annual Pride Parade is back on the streets of Nepal's capital after a two-year hiatus during COVID-19. Hundreds walked the streets of Kanmandu, waving flags, holding signs, and shouting pro-LGBTQI plus slogans. Nepal has some of the most progressive policies on homosexuality in South Asia, but the law still does not allow for gay marriage. It introduced a transgender category for citizenship certificates in 2013, and passports must also include a third gender category. Despite this progress, discrimination and bureaucratic hurdles still complicate matters from some like the transgender community. Attendees at this year's Pride Parade hope to raise awareness on equal rights. And we have more news coming up after a final short break, so stay with us. Welcome back to From the South. The BRICS group held on Friday its 12th meeting of Ministers of Economy and Trade. The bloc, comprising Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa, agreed to strengthen cooperation in the development of multilateral trading systems, as well as in the digital economy, investment, sustainable development and supply chain stability. It also agreed to support the proposed reforms to the World Trade Organization. The meeting is preparatory to the 14th Summit of Heads of State and Government to be held this year. Thousands of Muslims protested in several Indian cities against recent insults against the Prophet Muhammad by ruling party spokespersons. The largest protests were recorded in Srinagar, the main city in the Muslim-majority region of Kashmir, when thousands of people began demonstrating in front of the mosques, minutes after the Friday prayers. Security forces were deployed to quell the demonstrations that began in several districts of the region. The governments of Qatar, Kuwait and other states filed formal protests through diplomatic channels after the events. The Syrian army has neutralized a new aggression by Israel against its territory. Syria's anti-aircraft defense intercepted several missiles launched by Israel. Syrian military officials said the attack, which was executed at 4.20 a.m. local time, was directed at the southern part of the city of Damascus. They said despite having shut down most of the missiles, the attack from Tel Aviv left one person dead and significant material damage. In this regard, the Syrian Ministry of Transportation announced this Friday the suspension of all flights to end from the international airport of Damascus, saying several technical equipment at the air terminal have gone out of service. The Ministry of Health in Nigeria reported that 65 children died in the northern state of Jigawa as a result of an outbreak of cerebral spinal meningitis. The state epidemiologist of the health agency, Somalia Mahmoud, stated that these deaths occurred in a group of 257 registered patients. He noted that the first cases of the cerebral spinal meningitis were detected near the border with Niger. According to an official, with support from the international organization Save the Children, 17 health centers in Jigawa have benefited from the training of health personnel and medicines to contain the spread of the disease. During the last decade, significant outbreaks occurred mainly in the so-called meningitis belt, which covers 26 countries in the sub-Saharan Africa, according to the World Health Organization.
Ethiopia expressed interest in resuming talks with Egypt and Sudan on the Blue Nile Dam, which is suspected to be Africa's largest hydroelectric power plant. The multi-billion dollar project is expected to bring electricity to millions of off-grid Ethiopians, but Sudan and Egypt fear it will reduce the amount of water they receive from the Nile River. Several past rounds of negotiations among Ethiopia, Egypt and Sudan have failed. Egypt fears a quick filling of the dam will reduce its share of Nile waters and seeks a binding legal agreement in case of a dispute. In February this year, Ethiopia said it had begun producing power from one unit on the dam. Earlier on Friday, the Foreign Ministry spokesperson Dina Mufti told reporters the third filling of the dam is on schedule this year. So we have come to the end of this news brief. But remember, you can find this and many other stories on our website at telesoryenglish.net. And also, if you feel so inclined, please join us on social media for all the latest news. We are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Telegram. And before our farewells, we say goodbye with the song Es Nuestra América. It's Our America, performed by Maito Rivera with Alexander José Gil Domínguez, Hijo del Sur, and Aquiles Rengifo Aquilín, a melody that celebrates our union as a continent. For Telesur English, I'm Gladys Quesada. Thank you for watching.